Okay, this is a uh, instructional video for the Agilent 54622D mixed signal oscilloscope, uh, and this video is intended to help you uh, use cursors on the oscilloscope. All right, so first of all, why do we want to use cursors? Well, they help us to measure things, um, and so. Uh, for example, if we want to measure the period of a signal, uh, that might be a good thing, or the amplitude, uh, we can do this. Okay, so how do we go about doing this? Well, uh, we start by clicking under measure. It says cursors. All right, so now that I've clicked cursors, um, I actually have two X and two Y cursors. And what I can do is measure the distance between them. Um, and so you can see that this menu down here has come up. Um, and I can choose whether I want to change the X or the Y uh, using this soft key. Uh, let's start with X. And then whichever one has the little uh, loop in dark, that's the one that you're going to move. So I'm going to choose X1. And then you use this knob right here which has this little loopy thing uh, to adjust the cursor and you can see that as I turn it uh, you have a dotted line or a dashed line which is moving so then I could do something like position it right on this edge okay and then uh, the benefit of having a cursor is to measure distance in between things so uh, we have this on this edge, and then if I want to measure the entire period of this waveform, I need a cursor also on this edge. So I'm moving the X cursor. Um, I also uh, need to move the other one. So I'll choose X2 here. Okay, so you can see again I have this dashed line which moves when I move, my, move the cursor. And I can position it right on the other edge. Okay, and what's interesting about this is it is that it says right here in this bottom corner, which is probably hard to see from the video, it says delta x. All right, so that's the difference between these cursors. Um, and you can see it's 16.6 .6 milliseconds, which is about correct. This is a 60 hertz uh, um, sine or square wave. And what you can see is that uh, it also measures 1 over delta x, so this delta x is a period, 1 over delta x is a frequency, and it measures it at right about 60 hertz. Okay, so you can do a similar thing uh, with measuring amplitude, and the way that you do that is to choose the y cursor, so you come back to here, click y. Okay, and um, what you want to do then, once you have done that, is choose y1. Um, and when you do that, you can see how uh, moving this moves this cursor up and down. I'll set that to the top, and I, what I'm going to do is measure amplitude. So now I need the distance between that and the other cursor, which I'm moving at the moment, and I align that with the bottom. And you can see now um, that in the lower right-hand corner, it says delta Y1 and it says negative two volts. All right, so that's the distance from the first one to the second one. The first one being located at plus one volts and the second at negative one volts. All right, so uh, that their addition is, is uh, negative two volts. All right, the last thing you might want to know how to do with the cursor is to choose a different source. Um, and right now, uh, I only have the option of one source because I have only one connection. Uh, but if I had a second channel uh, connected, I could click on source and click it again to get down to two. And then it would allow me to uh, do something with channel two also. Actually, if I even turn on channel two uh, and come back to cursors, then uh, choose source, I could choose channel two. And uh, depending on what the scale of channel 2 is, uh, the measurement may be different than it would for uh, channel 1.